Hey everybody, welcome back to another Moira VOD review. Uh, this one is in a PC. This is a gold one. And this is on uh, Rialto. That's actually, uh, I, I haven't fast forwarded at all, so I realize this is a pretty long game. So we might not cover the whole thing, we'll see how it goes. Or uh, we might skip around a little bit. Uh, this player says, uh, really close match. Felt like they did great in the first round and just okay in the second round. Played aggressive and faded behind the enemy a few times trying for kills. Super fun game. Uh, so this is somebody I've reviewed before. Uh, the first time I reviewed them, they were in silver. And I know they've gotten as high as plat. Um, and right now we're in gold one. So good, you know, climbing overall. And that's good stuff. Uh, and I, I remember telling them to be more aggressive. Look for those more aggressive opportunities. And you're going to find out uh, you win more games. So um, that's why they said they were being more aggressive this game. This is actually an interesting... This is an interesting opening position, but their tank's also an idiot. So usually their tank wouldn't be here and you wouldn't get any value right here. But you are definitely getting value now. In this instance, I like this. You're putting the aggressive um, aggression on. Uh, I probably would have shot an orb right there and bounced it into them, and then probably gone around here to chase the mercy. You're with both of them there. You're not really going to do anything to this bash. Remember, when you're doing stuff, right? He ends up dying anyway because he's an idiot. But he was he was going to die whether you were there or not. If that makes sense, right? So you want to look for opportunities where you're going to add value where it wouldn't otherwise be. Think about the orbs. Just slow down. So, one thing, uh, you know, as with anything, this is not just Moira advice or even Overwatch advice. Uh, when you start practicing something, you have to do it really slow at first, very consciously, before it come, becomes habit. Okay? So, Spend more time improving one thing at a time, and then you'll see that those things will continue improving, right? Because I know we've talked about orbs before. So spend some time on that. Just, you know, just working on orbs. Just shoot orbs. Uh, there's not a lot you can do here except for get out. You're not going to kill the brig. It, it, you know, get out of the open, basically. Get away from the Kyder. That, I, I honestly, I, I like this. If she hadn't taken that, that charged hit there, it, it would have been really good. And you still got their tank out of it. They're probably going to res, but you, um, I was fine with that ult, honestly. So since they res, what I usually want to do, and it, time like this is try and try and kill a squishy like try and find a squishy i can reaper teleport behind you uh, try and find a squishy i can bully maybe the mercy um i know the mercy would probably be my prime target on their team because uh you're gonna have a hard time killing a brig uh you won't have a hard time killing a shitty brig but you know if if they're even like half decent uh, a brick can out duel a moira pretty quick pretty pretty handily um I, I like I like the aggression. Your tank seems pretty passive, and that's that's a common problem, you know, if, in a lot of ranks actually, um, and that's good. And so you guys being that far up, even though your tank wasn't really leading the charge, um, helps you guys put on put on a lot of pressure. Uh, their sojourn, I guess, didn't realize that she does a lot of damage in her ult, but she doesn't have any damage reduction. Okay, so that wasn't meant for you, but you can still take advantage of it. Um, but you're probably not going to do a lot, but yeah, I would uh, put the pressure on. I love this. It's great. This is perfect. Okay, so uh, the Moira faded. I want to kill her. She's more important for me to kill than he is. As soon as she faded, you listen for where she came out of fade, and you finish her off. Because you probably could have killed her there. Let me go back. Yeah, because she didn't have her ult yet. And... Um, 
Let's see. She has an orb. Oh, her orb is off cooldown. Oh, she's so dead. You, you so could have killed her right there. 100% could have killed her right there. Uh, and think how much different that fight would have gone if you would have killed her. Right, because now she has ult. She's ulting. You're bashing an ult, right? And then she, they live through it because she's healing them. Right, that was a huge, huge opportunity. Anytime you can kill a Moira, do it, right? Just think of it as... You, you know, it's you, right? It, it's, it's the other team's version of you. Right? Of how hard you are to kill. So anytime you get an opportunity, do it. That's your focus. I love this, though. The, this aggression like this, this is fantastic. You are making so much more space than your tank is here. You are, you are the tank here. You're the one making all the space. Okay. Alright. No standing on the cart ever. Let somebody else do that. Go upstairs. Um, the more high ground you use, the better off you're going to be. Because they're going to want to go up there. Let's see where they are right now. Look at that. Sure enough, they're going up to the high ground. Now, they could force you out of that high ground. Sure. Absolutely. But, make them do it. All right, because what are we doing right now? Nothing. That was a good orb. I like that bounce. That junk rat is up there. Is he up there by himself? He sure is. Junkrat's dangerous to duel, but you don't have to, right? Just shoot an orb right here. Like, say you're right here. Just shoot an orb right there, and so it bounces back. It'll force him out of there. And then he might die to somebody else. Or, if you're over on this side, and you come up here, just shoot an orb at him. Force him out of the space. Junkrat has no self-sustain. He's super high mobility, but he has no self-sustain. So if he's alone somewhere, he is punishable. Identify those times and take advantage of them. All right, he, he ends up jumping down anyway, right? But that was his that was his bad. That was his mistake. He shouldn't have done that. Right? That's why he's in cold, right? Everybody's got their reasons. Right? See, and he gets punished for it. He should have stayed up there because nobody was up there contesting him. There was no reason for him to drop down. Yeah, again, just, just be a little bit more thoughtful with the orbs. Most of your orbs are good. You know. Like, even that one, that's fine. Yeah, I, that, that worked out well, but it looked like you got, like, a little greedy or something. You're like, and, and kind of, you know, lost touch with where everybody was. But you guys cap, there you go. Um, I don't... I was going to say, I hope you didn't ult here, but you did, because there's nothing going on. There's really no reason for your ult. Your entire team is here. Uh, they're down both of their DPS. There is no way on earth both any of them are going to overwhelm you guys, right? So, here's some, here's some advanced shit you can do, okay? That you want to try. So, instead of ulting here, right? Because they're... Let's pretend... You didn't ult here and the Moira's still alive, right? Because now it's a you make it and you're gonna leave. So it's gonna be these four versus these three, right? Assuming the Moira's still alive. What you can do, because you have your ult, and they have two DPS that do not have any self-sustain, you can go spawn camp them. Right? Depending on on when they respawn, you know, they'll they'll either come out of this forward spawn or they'll come out of here. But you're close to it, right? Because you haven't capped yet, so their spawn is still closer. You can go up here, wait for them to come out. Because say say these these three get on here and they start fighting your team and they're they're stalling a little bit. Instead of waiting for the rest of them to get back, go spawn camp them. Right? Because the junk rat's still got another five seconds before he spawns. That means the sojourn's coming out alone. You can friggin' you 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 could duel a sojourn without even having to ult. But you still have your ult if you need it. Kill her, right? Now she's respawning, and then the junk rat's gonna run out alone. Because this is gold, right? People don't people don't walk out of spawn and look around. Because their brain has been turned off. So they walk out and they just keep walking in a straight line until they get to where they're going. They don't look around. So you can literally stand right here, 
The sojourn will run right by you and not even know you're there, and then you kill her. Right? And if you force out her, force out her movement ability, she's probably going to move the wrong way towards your team. Right? And then you can still kill her. This is a prime opportunity to come up here uh, and spawn camp somebody. And the more you learn how to spawn camp well, especially with, with people like Moira or Sombra, you know, or those, those really like self-sufficient characters, uh, it's going to overwhelm people in the lower ranks. They just can't, they don't know what to do. They can't handle it. Uh, let's go back. So that's, that is a, a more advanced version of what you could have done, right? See how you, the, the somber or the sojourn is shooting you. See that they, your team took care of those three just fine. Right. And this, it comes with trusting your team, and that's that's part of it. Just trust that your team's going to do something. Right? That they're going to do what they need to do. Especially when they have an advantage, right? It was 4v3, and they didn't have any DPS. This is good. I like this. You know, you're, this is called off-angling, right? Where you're not just going up main, you're, you're creating multiple angles of attack. This is good. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. You don't panic. So, a couple of things. Don't panic when there are Matra ults. Okay? His, like, sphere of influence, or whatever the hell you want to call it, doesn't actually do very much damage. You can basically ignore it. The only time you really care about him is if he's punching you. So, you ult... I'm sorry, not ult. The enemy Moira ults, but... What? She's purple. Kill that. 100%. Just chase... Just chase that, that kill. Right? You see, he did what? 16 damage to you? Who gives a shit? Right? That, focus that target. Especially if you get hit him with an orb. Look, look at his friggin' health. Right? But, since you guys didn't spike him down until, you know, so the um, effect wore off, right? Before he was on a coal. They ended up surviving. Uh, I don't see a point of that. I don't see a point of that. Or... Alright, so let's figure out what, what happened here. Alright, so you chased him out. You're not, you are not going to kill him. Uh, I, I think that was, that was a, a partial mistake, right? You, you stay back and help your Bastion. This is, this is where you, you can pos pocket your Bastion, right? Part of being a support, uh, a lot of people... The problem with them playing a support is they all they do is friggin' pump healing into somebody else and then hope for the best. Um, you still got to do that sometimes, especially if a Bastion in turret form. You want to make sure he is getting everything he needs, right? And I, I would not stand out in the open, especially against him, because if he gets um, supported, you're, you're not going to be able to kill him like, like he ends up doing, right? And this is this is a couple of things all at once, like not standing out in the open, right? You can stay back there and do everything you need to do, and then still escape if you need to, because these two can kill you pretty quickly, right? Brig is good against Moira. Ramatra is good against Moira because he can chase her down. Um, Got to be careful about that. Okay, so what am I doing now? Here, I'm moving up and, and harassing them, right? Until my team gets there. Like that. Uh, but I, I look for multiple angles, right? Now you're going to find out why you don't want to duel a brig. Right? Yeah, she you got lucky there, right? She can kill your ass. So you pinged her. That's good. Now she was dumb for continuing to chase you like that. Because she was way too far forward. Uh, but she still could have been. Good. Focus the weak target first. Yep, good. Let's get old. Yeah, so stuff like that. Wait till the brig engages somebody else, or somebody else engages the brig, right? So she takes her attention away. Then, then you can... Oh my god. Uh, I, I think what you're doing is fine here. Mo you know, mostly I would be looking for the low health targets like that. I would try to kill the supports, right? Um, 
the sustain that they have is is usually what draws these out. Um, yeah, there's not much to like just talk about here. It's just a huge stall. Um, and you guys kept so cool. There are some orb shots at the beginning of this, and I never freaking remember what they are. But anyway, there's there's way you can shoot orbs into, orbs into their spawn uh, from here. If you ever watch uh, Arcs UK on this map, he'll he he does some some orb shots that work. Uh, but yeah. I, I would kind of open where you are, especially against the Hanzo. I don't want to be... Uh, oh, wait, no, the Hanzo's on your team. Um, yeah, I would open up there. Right. That was, that was good play by your tank. Um, that was good. Good. Chase him down. Work... Work more on, on not standing out in the open, right? Staying near the corner. So you have to fade less often for because you're standing out in the open. Use fade as a reposition, not you know, not as a crutch. Staying out in the open. Okay, so we can hear them going over there. Now we can see them. They're good. Good good opportunity to shoot a damage orb in there. Get get some uh there you go. Perfect. Yep. Good. Okay, so she's over there by herself. She can just TP out, but good. Make her use it. Make her TP into your team because that's what your tank needs, right? She needs to be in, in, in the thick of it, right? So she's over there by herself. Go force her. Not really a necessary healing orb. I, I, there are very few times where you shoot a heal, like... And I'm not saying you, I mean the, the proverbial you, where you shoot a, a, a healing orb where a damage orb would have sufficed, uh, a damage orb plus healing spray. And then that kind of compounds the full uh, turn that you get. That was a good healing orb, right? So, they, they do exist, but a lot of times if you're just like healing someone, like one, one player like that, nah, you, you really don't. The only time I use a healing orb is if I like I need I need it all, all at once and I, I need all three hundred of that health to go to a bunch of people. Like here, I would I you know, this is an opportunity where I would I would shoot a healing orb into that. Right? Because the damage orb isn't really gonna do anything there because all your team's frozen. You're not gonna kill anybody. Yeah, you might put some pressure and get some resources back. Uh, but not a, I don't think you're gonna put enough pressure to save your team. So I in that instance I would shoot a healing orb, so Okay, so you shot a healing orb, but now you're out of spray, right? Just just shoot a damage orb. Sure. I see why you did it, but now you did it again, right? And that's good, right? You help keeping your tank. But yeah, you gotta. If you're gonna shoot the healing orb, you gotta get up there and, and do some damage or something. It's almost never a good idea to just shoot a healing orb and then do nothing. All right, so you can fade jump up here, and it's not even a trick. You just fade, jump, and then fly up there. So you could go up there with the Hanzo, and I would want to do that because I would want to encourage him to stay up there because that's a really good place for him to be. Yeah, I, I don't know why we're getting away over here. Um, that was an odd... Odd play. Um, yeah, I was going to say, just die, or you can go up here and try and harass from behind if your team's going to be able to engage him again. Or you can wait it out. Because right? you're pretty safe over there, and you can get out over here once they get around the corner. Um, but what you did is, is fine, too. Okay, he's on the high ground. You watched him go on the high ground. Go with him to the high ground. All right, because you have an you have an Ana. Your, your, your Ana can help your tank, right? Uh, now, if your tank was on the high ground, I would say go. 
but go up go up there and then he, you can heal your tank from up there you can damage from up there you can help force this bastion off the high ground right or at least take his attention so he's not looking at your tank you're not gonna duel him i don't know what the fuck you're doing there <laughs> like you walked right by the bastion <laughs> So uh, it seems like maybe you're just tunnel visioned on. Hey, I gotta heal my tank. That's what it, that's what it seemed like. Um, I do that too. Good. I probably would have, in, in that instance, I would have kept the beam on the brig as opposed to chasing the Hanzo. And that's just a tracking thing, and it's not even that it's your tracking, it's just a tracking thing. Like Hanzo's jumping away, he's jumping away from danger, he's not in danger of dying, um, and you have to try and track him as he's doing that. Uh, you're gonna get more value out of just beaming the brig. Right, you guys killed her anyway, and that's good, you know, because the Junker Queen's axe goes through her, her shield. Um, I like that orb. But I like you were up the high ground there, it's right, and then you jump down off the high ground, right, and die, right? Because, I mean, it's basically team fights over anyway, but, um, so I get why you did it there. But that's that's also the danger of staying on the low ground, you know, just be on the high ground. Oh. Uh, okay, where would I be over here, or during this? I would be over here doing stuff like shooting orbs at them, making them look at me over there, or all the way over to the left. But I would probably do it over here because it, it breaks your line of sight of anybody on the cart and you don't have to look at too many people at once. Uh, because, right, if you have their attention over here and they're looking at you, that means they're not looking over here to the guy who's standing on the open, right? You can help your team do that a lot, right? Look at this, right? This, this player is not even playing the game and they're in the same rank, right? So you have to think outside of just this line right here. Okay, because you can shoot an or damage orb right here and it'll bounce there and, about, and then over that way. Okay, look for these opportunities more. You do them sometimes, so I know that you see them, but do them all the time. So something like, when you are just healing your tank, right, and, and not really doing anything else, that is just stemming the bleeding, okay? It is not, it's not, not closing the wound, right? You're just going to make your team die slower, but you're still going to die, right? The only way that your team is not going to die is if you kill the enemy team. Because there is much more damage in this game than there is healing. So if you find that all, you know, you're in a situation where all you're doing is healing, you're in the wrong spot. So I can hear the brig down there. I, you know, I'd go shoot an orb at her, right? Because she's not going to get up the stairs at you. Yeah, good. Perfect. I'm not going to duel her. Lucky your tank went in there, right? Uh, you would have gotten out anyway, but don't duel her. Just put pressure on her. So that's good. That's a huge stagger. That's fantastic. Because right, what are, you know, what are we doing? That was a really good combo by them. Uh I did. Let's see. Why did we all here? I like the I like the fade there, but I, I don't really see why we ulted there. Uh, this because this is where ult tracking will kind of help too. Uh, you you typically don't want to ult a Junker Queen ult because you saw why. Uh, because your entire team's going to be purple. Um, so even if you can put a lot of damage pressure on the enemy team, your team is half health uh, and they're all purple. So the the enemy team is is they're literally just going to focus on killing your team. They're not even going to look at their health. They don't care. Right? Um, yeah, I'm not not a huge fan of that old. Look for opportunities to kill their supports. Basically, uh, in, in this comp, my ult 
what I'm going to do with uh, my ult is I'm going to try and kill one of them. Because you can. Okay, this is another just... He so shot that orb, but it's going to go at an upward angle, right? Use the, use the walls behind the point, or behind the track, or whatever, to make him bounce back. You can do that. That's good food. And you can go up here, right? You can fade jump up here. And nobody can get to you. Right? Their Kiriko can't, but she's probably not going to. Because... She's not. She's on the low ground. That's what Colts do. Right? So if you were up there, nobody could shoot at you right there. The only person that would possibly shoot at you, get up to you, is the Kiriko. And she's not going to. Use that to your advantage. Oh, looks like we died so fast. Uh, good. Actually, I really like... That's... That is a totally uh, value trade. That is excellent because they lost. She has her ult, and they lost their um, res, and you have spawn advantage. That was. I am 100% good with the trade. That is a good death, right? There are such things. That was a good trade. Okay. Yeah, he's just panicking. It's over. Even though he shouldn't, right? That's part of the gold experience. He's panicking because they're losing the team fight. But now imagine if he... Oh, now, now he's on ball, but imagine if he still had that. Sigma's ult is excellent in overtime. Because all he's got to do is, right, walk up and ult you guys. And everybody gets lifted out of the point, And then it's over. So, capitalize on the enemy team mistake. That's good. Yep, yep, yep. Excellent, excellent. Yes. Excellent all. Nope, don't worry about him. Kill her. There you go. Perfect. Oh. You, you could have kept the pressure on. I know she died anyway, so that's good. Um, yeah, don't worry about him. Just kill the squishies. But that was, a, that was an excellent all. Um, so what I was going to say there is I, I, you're kind of focusing too much on the ball. Uh, Moira... There's no reason for you to be. Moira doesn't do anything against ball. Your, your damage just is just so little, right? Yeah, maybe one one time in a hundred, you know, that encounter, you did just enough damage that he was going to die there. Usually if he's going to die, he's going to die anyway. Uh, and, you know, you're otherwise not going to be doing much because part of what makes wrecking ball a good tank is how much he distracts the team right people will chase the ball right because they're dogs right but it, people will chase the ball and that's what he wants because if you chase him you're not looking at anybody else on his team and they're all they're all looking at you and you die right? that is one of the things that makes a ball a really good tank so uh don't do that don't chase the ball the only time you should care about the ball is if you're playing something that can do something about him, right? If you're playing on and you can sleep him, if you're playing Brig and you can you can whip shot him away or bash or whatever, okay? Um, or if you're playing a you know another role. But as Moira, you don't care about ball in the slightest, not even a little bit. Okay. Yeah, this is a this is a fine based on what they've been playing. This is this is a fine starting point. I would stay up there, right? Because they're they're probably not going to have anybody that's mobile enough to come get you. Yeah, you, you it's like you you had the right idea and then you just gave it away. You don't need to be here. Be up here and put pressure on the mercy. Because the mercy likes to stand still anyway. Just shoot orbs at her. Give her. Give her a hard time. Make it so she can't res, right? Because she's too she's too focused on you. Like this. But you could be doing that all the entire time you could be doing that up there. I like that you're focusing the mercy, probably because I've told you to do that before. But or you're smart enough to, to do it. You know, I like that. So the thought process of this is okay, where can I stand that I can do the most damage to Mercy without taking any myself? And it's definitely up there. 
think they got about 30 seconds left. Looks like you guys are just going to full hold this, so that's good. Um, not not going to make it out of the corner. Okay, so, uh, yeah, we'll just wrap it up here. Um, big stuff. I love the aggression. Excellent. Uh, we talked about some more advanced stuff like uh, spawn camping. Um, I would like to see positioning, right? Use more of the high ground. Use stops. Don't stand in the open lot. It's gotten a lot better for sure, but keep working on that. Work on your orb tosses, you know, slow down. Think about where you're going to do it. Um, almost all your ults were good, right? There was a couple that were iffy in, in the one that I just didn't like, but, um, you know, uh, otherwise they're good. So I, I think you're doing the right things. Just keep practicing those things. Um, and, and you're doing good stuff. So again, yeah, keep keep using the, the alternate angles. Use the high ground. Identify the person on the enemy team that you're going to bully. Okay, so like the Mercy, whatever. Um, and keep going there from there. So uh, good stuff. Keep it up. Keep going. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.